When this 1967 Pontiac GTO arrived at the V8 Speed and Resto shop, it really looked like it had been dragged out of a swamp. I mean, it was rusty and crusty. It had patina and, and not the good kind. Uh, it was wearing multiple colors. The interior was trashed. The vinyl top was smoked. It didn't run. It was a, it was a mess. But it is a very cool car, uh, and the owner has had it for a long time, so there's a lot of sentimental value with this car. So we were very happy for the opportunity and challenge to bring this very cool 67 GTO back to the road. Originally, this car was Tyrell blue, beautiful color blue, uh, with a black vinyl top, bucket seat interior, the Pontiac 400 V8 is uh, still under the hood, coupled to a Turbo 400 automatic transmission. It's the first year for the Turbo 400. And it's a factory installed air conditioning car. So we were going to bring it back to how it looked on day one with a few performance modifications added for better drivability. Customer had the engine rebuilt in the late 80s, I believe, and didn't really drive it since then. The engine looked horrible, uh, and we spent a little bit of time, and we're actually able to get it to run, which was cool. Didn't run very well, but at least we, uh, we were pretty convinced we had a solid engine to start with. On all of our complete restorations, the first thing we do is photo document everything, um, try to record what the car looked like when it came in, and then we take a bunch of measurements to see how things fit, how the doors fit, and bumpers, and the gaps, and all that kind of stuff. And then we disassemble it. And as we disassemble it, we catalog all the parts and start making decisions about what's gonna get replaced, what's gonna get restored. We removed the body and had it media blasted. Once we got the car back from the blaster, <laughs> then we could really see what was going on. We put the freshly stripped chassis in our metal shop, and we were pleasantly surprised by the chassis because it looked pretty bad when it came in. But most of that rust was just kind of really light surface scale, and it disappeared during the media blast. There were some areas that needed to be uh, repaired, like on many of these uh, General Motors A-body platform cars. They have a body mount that attaches the body to the frame, and those body mount holes uh, were home to some rubber bushings, which held water over the years and rusted and wore those body mounts out. So we fabricated some new body mounts and uh, made a couple of small repairs on the frame. So we're cleaning the frame. We got all the patches made. We sent it back to the blaster for one last quick blasting. <clears throat> now we're cleaning it off, getting ready to epoxy it. And we'll spray it with two coats of epoxy and two coats of Imron. Give it its nice protective coating before it gets put back together. So at this point, our GTO frame has been media blasted, metal repaired, and painted in a satin black Imron uh, industrial finish, and we're starting to put it back together. We decided to use a tubular suspension system from BMR Suspension. This kit has tubular front, upper, and lower control arms, uh, performance coil springs, Bilstein shock absorbers, um, a larger diameter front sway bar, urethane bushings that are greasable, uh, the rear suspension also has those tubular control arms and uh, the rear sway bar. We rebuilt the gears in the rear end before we assembled the whole thing and put new seals and bearings on everything.
Uh, we got a kit from Classic Disc Brakes. Uh, and it's, it's a pretty simple install. Uh, the parts bolt on where the backing plate was. Uh, and it actually uses a Ford based caliper, uh, which is kind of nice because the Ford caliper actually has a better e brake situation than a lot of the GM rear disc calipers that you get. Uh, so far, this is going pretty smoothly. So, this car is going to handle better and it's also going to stop better with the disc brakes. Again, the goal was to build a cruiser, you know, a car that looked good, uh, that was still comfortable to drive. We didn't want to put too much suspension in it, if you will. Um, and, and overdo it, this owner was not gonna be racing this car on an autocross course or anything like that. Uh, just wanted to make it feel a little more modern than it did back in 67. The body became a bigger project than we thought. And sometimes that happens. Again, the mission was to make it look like day one brand new. So we knew it was gonna take some work. Uh, we essentially, you know, got ourselves an OPGI catalog and just wrote yes on the cover and sent it in. And then a semi-truck full of sheet metal showed up. We ended up replacing the upper trunk filler panel, both quarter panels, the main cabin floor, the rear wheel houses, the whole trunk floor, the rear tail panel, the top of the dash, the uh, firewall. Uh, we fixed some patches in the doors and fenders. But we did reuse the hood, so that was cool. Um, there are some challenges in doing that much metal work. You, you're risking the whole structure shifting and losing its shape if you cut it all apart. So the first thing we like to do is uh, fixture the body on a, on a jig. We have a chassis table and then support the body uh, by welding in braces everywhere we can. And then we measure everything repeatedly and record those measurements because uh, you don't want to cut something apart only to find out later the new piece isn't in the right place and then glass doesn't fit or trim or you know the list goes on and on. We knew that uh, we were going to keep the air conditioning but change it to a vintage air system so the original uh, General Motors firewall had a great big hole in it. The vintage air system does not re require that big hole anymore so we made a, rather than make a little block off plate we fabricated a whole new firewall for it and used our uh, Mittler bead roller to put kind of an interesting pattern into it so that uh, when you open the hood, you got something with a little bit of style back there. Replacing floors and trunk floors on a car like this is a pretty big job, especially if you use the one piece floor like we like to use because you've got to get the, the bottom of the car open enough to accept the new floor pan, but still hold it in place. Um, and did I mention we also replaced the rocker panels on this car too. So all the sheet metal on the bottom of the car got changed out and you have to methodically go through it step by step and uh, panel by panel. And on the things that have multiple panels that are gonna interact with each other, like the trunk, the tail pan, the deck lid, the quarter panels, the wheelhouses, you wanna put those in place and oftentimes you're gonna have to, you know, work them to fit a little bit we always like to screw everything together before we weld it so that we can put all the adjacent panels on and make sure the details are right like the uh, the trunk weather strip channel you know if you get that wrong the trunk's going to leak um, we also like to test fit the trim around the windows these gto's have that buttress style uh, treatment on both sides of the rear window which of course rusts out on all of them uh, especially if it had a vinyl top. And uh, the new quarter panels, of course, have that feature, but if you put them together and something isn't exactly right, um, your window trim and your glass might not even fit. So there's a lot of checking along the way. Uh, and this is where we set the gaps, right? So the metal work was done for the most part, but we wanted to make sure that all of the door gaps were symmetrical, that they're consistent, that they're nice and tight. Uh, but they have enough room to where the panels can open and close without you know rubbing into each other. After a long process of replacing the body panels, um, our GTO got put back on a rotisserie and we again scuffed the whole car, scuffed all those new panels down and uh, sprayed it with an epoxy primer so the whole body tub was then sealed up and then from there the uh, bottom side got painted with uh, the, that black Imron once again to have a nice black satin look. When the chassis was a roller, we then uh, mounted the body back on the chassis 
and then installed all the sheet metal, the fenders, the doors, the hood, the rear deck lid. Uh, GTOs are interesting. The hood fit um, has a, a relationship with the upper cowl screen and the front fenders and the hood and the lower rocker panels that there's a lot of straight lines there. And if they don't fit together right, it's obvious. So we spent some time to get all that to fit properly. As all this was happening, we took a look at the engine. It is the original Pontiac 400 V8. We basically took the engine apart, checked the bearing clearances, looked inside the cylinders, looked at the cylinder heads, uh, determined that it was in pretty good shape. It was just kind of dirty and ugly. Uh, we took a few minutes to lap the valves with some, some compound just to kind of clean those surfaces up. And then we stripped the block, cleaned it all up, ran it through the paint process, uh, and sprayed it with the original Pontiac light blue mist or whatever the color is called. Then the car went through the bodywork phase, and although this is new sheet metal, it still needs to be straightened. Uh, you'll find hammer marks from the assembly process and little dings and things that you know aren't as smooth as glass. So uh, our body team spent a bunch of time working body filler, block sanding, primer, block sanding, polyester, block sanding that. And at this point, we also put all the trim on the car, the window trim, uh, even the GTO lettering. Uh, so that we knew that everything was going to fit during final assembly. You block sand it with a, a finer and finer and finer grit so that pretty soon all the panels are laser straight and it's going to provide that beautiful straight horizon reflection that everybody wants, especially in a big slab sided car like this one. While the car was in the body shop, our interior shop went to work, uh, stripping the original seats and taking a look at the seat springs and the internals of these seats. But we always like to media blast those seat frames, um, fix any springs that are broken, either clip them or re-weld them. Uh, that happens a lot. You don't want to put a seat you know, with new upholstery and then you sit in it and it collapses again like it used to. So uh, we painted all those seat frames and then uh, Jay in our interior shop went ahead and, and put new covers on them and stuffed them with a proper amount of seat foam. Sometimes you see restored cars that are overstuffed and all of a sudden you're sitting you know, way too high in the seat. So uh, it's, it's a little bit of a dance to get the right, the right feel because the materials that they used back in 67 aren't really available today. They're just different, they've evolved. So you gotta pay attention to that. Next up in the paint process was to paint the door jams and the under hood areas. Um, and this is where we finally started to see some color. We've been painting a lot of epoxy and, and black on the dashboard and the interior and underside and all that stuff. But uh, Jeff, our painter, whipped up a mix of the Tyrol Blue and shot some of the areas that uh, are easier to get to with the car disassembled. So again, door jams, rear tail pan, uh, the inside of the trunk area, um, and I'll tell you, the color looked awesome. I, I love this color. It's got a, a nice high level of metallic. It's a, a beautiful, beautiful blue. Now to minimize more risk, um, we set the engine in place and did some of the dash wiring and everything without the front sheet metal on. We like to do that if we know we're painting the whole car. And this way we can get the plumbing done, get the brakes done, get everything working. And we won't have to be leaning over freshly painted fenders, you know, if, if we had put this engine in after the car was painted on the outside. Make sense? And then that got topped with a Phytech fuel injection unit, uh, which is going to provide a little more reliability, drivability for this car, if you will, uh, like a modern car, right? And that was our goal. It's one of those systems where as you drive, it kind of refines itself. And then put the sheet metal back on and primer. So now we had color in the jams, primer on the outside, and uh, uh, we were able to fire it up. Yeah. We were very happy to see how well that Pontiac 400 ran right off the bat. All right, so it was finally time to roll this car into the paint booth, which is always a super exciting time because when you get color on a car, it's a very dramatic visual change, right? And especially when it goes from boring gray primer to a beautiful color like this Tyrol Blue. Our painter, Jeff, 
brought the car in, masked it all up, cleaned it up, wiped it down, and began spraying the, uh, the two-stage paint system. It's a base coat and a clear coat. After the color is laid down, of course, go back into the paint booth and spray some clear. Uh, we put a bunch of coats of clear on this one because we knew we wanted a, you know, a show car finish for, for lack of a better term. Jeff did a wonderful job of getting the uh, metallic pattern nice and uniform and consistent. The color came out beautiful. After final paint, um, it was time to put some of the detail work back in. The badges, the grill, the new bumpers, all those jewelry pieces that we got uh, from OPGI to make it look nice. Then we installed the vinyl top. I grew up not liking them because they always held moisture and they rusted. but. When a vinyl top is new and crisp against new paint on a car that's not rusty, I think they look awesome. This one, I think, came out tremendous. Reinstalled the door panels, the sound deadener inside the car, put a new carpet in, finished off the dash. We put some gauges in from uh, Dakota Digital. We put a custom auto sound audio system in it, added power windows, uh, put a new headliner in it. And before you know it, the car was pretty much done, but one of the best parts about this project was to be able to present it to the owner and his family at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals show in Chicago. Now the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals to me is, is the best muscle car show in the world. It's an indoor show. It happens in November in the Chicago area every year. It's full of invitational displays of, of super, super high-end, um, ultra rare muscle cars that come from all over the country, uh, even different countries to be on display. It's something special for sure. All right, everybody. I'm here with Janet and Jerry Hilsenbeck, just coming off a restoration of their 1967 GTO. And we're here at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals in Rosemont, Illinois to unveil it. So gentlemen, without further ado, How about that?
the V8 Speed and Resto Shop team unveiled the car to the owners and their family. Let's take a look. The, the crew did a tremendous job at restoring this car. It's better than showroom new. And Jerry, what I'd like to do now is hand you the keys to your new GTO. Gee, thanks. I take it off and go for a ride. Take it for a spin. The Cruz and Tigers GTO Club right. was on hand and presented the owner with an honorary membership to their GTO Club. But perhaps the highlight was the amazing score the car received after being judged in the street modified class. The car scored 997 out of a possible 1,000 points. Every car here is a top-notch show winner and yours is one of them now. It was great to see multiple generations enjoying the car and to see the crew's hard work recognized at this national event. It's hard not to like the car. It drove wonderfully, um, it sounded great, it made good power, it went around turns, it stops, it starts, it's comfortable, but it looks dynamite. It just has a, just a great look. And we were all very fortunate that uh, the family allowed us to bring this car back around for them. It was an honor to work with such nice people and such a cool car. So if you have a, uh, a family heirloom or uh, a project like this that you would like to see return from something that looked like a creature from the Black Lagoon to a, a showstopper, um, this car is an example that anything can happen. You know, anything you drag out of a lake can be a show winner with the right care. We're happy to help you out. You can reach us at v8speedshop.com. While you're there, take a look at the photo gallery. We have thousands of pictures detailing every step of the restoration. And you can see firsthand how the Swamp Thing became a beauty queen.